Hello, Mrs H here. This video is going to teach you how to carry out paired and unpaired students' t-tests. You use a student's t-test when you want to see if there's a significant difference between two means or if the differences are due to chance. There are two types of student's t-test, unpaired and paired. You need to know when and how to use each one. You use the unpaired student's t-test if the means have been generated by two independent groups, i.e. each set of data arises from separate individuals. For example, the number of minutes of daily exercise of 15 year olds in UK and compare that with 15 year olds in Japan. These are completely different sets of individuals generating the data. So we would use unpaired student's t-test for that. You would use a paired student's t-test when both means are from the same group of individuals at different points in time. So if we take a similar example, if we just had the same 15 year olds in the UK and compared their daily exercise before and during lockdown, because this comparison would involve the same individuals, we use a paired student's t-test. There are certain steps you need to follow when carrying out any statistical test. You could be asked questions on any of the steps, so it is important you understand them all. You need to state your null hypothesis, decide which statistical test to use and why, carry out the statistical test, find the critical value at p equals 0.05, compare your statistical value with the critical value and write a conclusion and reject or accept your null hypothesis. We'll start with the unpaired student's t-test. This compares two means from two independent groups. This is the mean of the first data set and this is the mean of the second data set. So these are what we are going to compare. Then you have the number of data points in the first data set, the number of data points in the second set of data, the standard deviation for the first data set squared, and the standard deviation of the second data set squared. Let's look at an example. Are the lengths of holly leaves significantly different at different heights in a holly tree? So a student measured the lengths of 10 holly leaves, 0 0.5 meters high in the tree, and then they measured 10 holly leaves, one meter high in the tree and recorded their results. We first need to state a null hypothesis. A null hypothesis says there is no statistical significance and we carry out an investigation to see whether we can accept or reject it. So our null hypothesis is that there is no significant difference between the mean lengths of holly leaves at 0 0.5 meters and one meter. Because the leaves at 0 0.5 meters are different leaves to those found at one meter, they are two independent groups or separate individuals. So that's why we're going to use the unpaired student's t-test. We will call this data set one and this one data set two. The standard deviation has already been calculated for you, but you do need to know how to do this. So watch my video on standard deviation, which will show you how to calculate it using the formula and shows you a quicker way using your stat mode on your calculator. In fact, I have used this exact experiment and data in the video. The link to this video is in the description. Now all we have to do is substitute our values into the student's t-test formula. So the mean of data set one is 9.3 minus 7.3, which is the mean of data set two, divided by the square root of the standard deviation for data set one squared, which is 0 0.95 squared, divided by n, which is how many data points there are, so 10, plus 1.16 squared divided by 10. Once you've calculated each part of the equation, you will end up with 2 divided by 0 
4741413291 which comes to 4.2181515587 and that is your t value and we can round that up to 4.22 The student's t-test value of 4.22 now needs to be compared to a critical value and we can use this critical value table below. In biology we use p equals 0.05 which means if our statistical value is greater than the critical value in this column the probability of our results being due to chance is less than 5%. In this case, that would mean that the differences between the two means is significant. We have the correct column now. Uh, we need to find the correct row to use. And we do that by working out the degrees of freedom. For the unpaired students t-test, degrees of freedom is the sum of both samples minus the number of data sets. So 10 leaves measured at 0 0.5 meters plus 10 leaves measured at one meter minus two equals 18. So look at the table and the critical value at P equals 0 0.05 and 18 degrees of freedom is 2.101. I find using this diagram really helpful in remembering when to accept and reject the null hypothesis. The critical value is 2.101. The student's t-test value of 4.22 is greater than the critical value of 2.101. So we reject the null hypothesis. The null hypothesis is that there is no significant difference between the mean lengths of holly leaves at 0.5 meters and one meter. We now know that we can reject the null hypothesis so we can write a conclusion. The student's t-test value of 4.22 is greater than the critical value of 2.101, so we reject the null hypothesis. There is a significant difference between the mean lengths of holly leaves at 0.5 metres and 1 metre. Notice that there are three parts to the conclusion. The comparison between the statistical value and the critical value, that we reject the null hypothesis, and what that means. Now we'll look at the paired students t-test. You use this when you want to find out if there is a significant difference between two means of data taken from the same test subjects at different times. Don't forget, you will be given all the formulas in an exam. You just need to remember what values to substitute in. So this D with the bar over, is the mean of the differences. N is the number of individuals in the sample and SD is the standard deviation of the differences. Let's have a look at an example. A student wanted to see if there was a significant difference between the mean heart rate during moderate exercise and the mean heart rate during high intensity exercise. First, we need to state a null hypothesis. So that would be there is no significant difference between the mean heart rate during moderate exercise and the mean heart rate during high intensity exercise. Now, because the moderate intensity exercise and high intensity exercise is being carried out by the same subjects, we will use the paired students t-test. Creating an extra column will make it easy to calculate the difference between the heart rates. And from this, we can calculate the mean of the differences, which is your little D with the bar on top. And then the standard deviation of the differences, which is SD. I would recommend using the stat mode on your calculator for this. You can do it the long way and substitute the values in to the formula but you will need to create two extra columns here and there will be seven digit numbers that you have to add and square and it becomes very tedious. After all, we're not doing A-level math, so as long as we know how to get the values to substitute into the t-test formula, that's all we need to know. So, 
Let's work out the differences then. Start with the first row. 100 minus 54 is minus 54 and so on and so on. Work out the total, which is minus 434. Then you can calculate the mean, which is minus 434 divided by 15, which gives you minus 28.93. And then the standard deviation of the differences, which works out to be 21.9560162. Six, four. Whether you do it the long way or the short way, you will end up with the same answer. Now you have all the values you need to calculate the paired t-test value. So let's pop them into the formula. So t equals minus 28.93 times the square root of 15 divided by 21.95601664. And then that gives us minus 28.93 times 3.87298 divided by 21.95601664. And we will end up with our T value of minus 5.10317559. And we can round that up to minus 5.10. That is our final T value. It's really important that you don't round up your numbers until the very end of the calculation. And that is the same for all sciences. In an exam, it is unlikely that you would have to do all of this calculation, but you could be asked to work out any element of it. Now we have our T value, we can find the critical value and compare. Our T value is minus 5.10. We ignore the negative value as it has no bearing on the significance of the difference. We just use the absolute value when we compare with a critical value. So we'll find the critical value at P equals 0 0.05. For the paired T test, because the subjects are paired, degrees of freedom is N minus one. So in this case, that's 15 minus one, which gives us 14. And look at the critical value, it is 2.15 rounded up. The critical value is 2.15. The paired t-test value of 5.10, ignore the minus, is greater than 2.15. So we reject the null hypothesis and we can write our conclusion. The T value of 5.10 is greater than the critical value of 2.15. So we reject the null hypothesis. There is a significant difference between the mean heart rate during moderate exercise and the mean heart rate during high intensity exercise. And that's it. Paired and unpaired students T test done. If you would like some more practice, head over to biologybreakdown.co.uk where you can find some more examples and questions. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this video useful. Please like and subscribe and more videos will be added soon.